Is that you? <laughs> Fanatic Formula Wheel B2 is a rectangular steering wheel aimed at sim racers with a preference for Formula and GT racing. It's in the upper half of the Fanatic Formula range, costing €120 Euros more than the most basic Formula style wheel that Fanatec currently offers, the F1 Esports wheel. About 12 weeks ago when I shopped around for my current setup, I chose this wheel over the cheaper F1 Esports wheel for some specific reasons. So as well as casting an eye over the whole wheel and its most prominent features, I want to touch on whether that was worthwhile. When you take this wheel out of the box, you definitely feel like you've gotten your money's worth. Let's put it that way. The carbon body construction and Alcantara hand grips are so cool and as a visual piece it is brilliant to look at. Upon first handling you will see nothing about this wheel feels badly made, though I have some extra comments about that later. If you're browsing the Formula wheels from Fanatec, the main reason you'll choose the Formula V2 over the F1 Esports or Formula Carbon is for the inclusion of the extra buttons and dials. The thumb dials, rotating switches and flick switches seen here are all extras that the Formula V2 boasts over lesser models. To me, the Formula V2 is a bit like having a £600 iPhone with a £5 plastic phone case. It's gorgeous and well put together, but in my opinion some of the switch gear lets it down a bit, and crucially it's that very switch gear that forms the appeal of V2 over everything else. I am someone that loves to tweak brake bias throughout the lap. To do this you need a way to nudge the bias value up and down really easily and the thumb dials on the Formula V2 were going to be the answer to this. Unfortunately I found them to be nowhere near positive enough for what I hoped they would do. It is too easy to make two clicks when you only wanted one, and sometimes due to the way the software works it doesn't successfully register multiple clicks, instead it blends them into one continuous click. This is a problem that I had when I tried to use a red wheel dial on my old G29 and I simply put it down to it being a budget piece of kit so I forgave it, but I wasn't expecting to have this problem with what is meant to be a premium bit of sim racing equipment. Don't get me wrong, I do still use the thumb dial for brake bias but I definitely can't be sure how many clicks the wheel is registered by feel alone, instead I'm relying on my smartphone dashboard to keep track of the bias amount when I shouldn't really have to take my eyes away from the track. I do wish that the thumb dials had more positive feedback so you could confidently adjust values from feel alone. I use the other thumb dial to cycle between in-game displays like the black boxes in iRacing and the problem is the same there too. The only way to guarantee accurate clicks with the thumb encoders is to go slower than I feel that you should have to. The thumb dials themselves are nicely built and look great but I can't really say I'm 100% happy with how they do their job. So on to the next Formula V2 party piece, the multi-position switches or rotating dials on the centre of the wheel. Though there's three dials on the wheel, the middle dial is reserved for additional paddle attachments for hand clutch controls and such, so you only really have the two left and right switches to bind to your own control preferences. Unlike the thumb dials though, these switches are super positive with an unmistakable click between their positions and have no vagueness about them. The switches are able to twist continuously and are not restricted to just 12 positions, so there's nothing stopping you from using them for a wide range of values. I've got my own multi-position switches mapped to engine map and traction control and they do the job really well. It is so satisfying to use these switches in the middle of the action in response to a new situation and gives you the sense of impact that I find a bit lacking in the thumb dials. However, my wheel seemingly had a factory defect as the middle dial broke into two pieces one day after I idly twisted it. Super glued it back into one piece and back on the wheel it went. Perhaps the material quality for the dials could have been better and I'm not going to make much of a bigger deal out of it than that, but it illustrates that the extra switch gear that sets this wheel apart may not be quite up to the par of the base level switch gear that appears on all the Formula style wheels in the lineup. After all, the extra switch gear forms a big part of why you would want to pay extra for the Formula V2 over the Formula Carbon, so you gotta hope that they're good. The last of the additional switch gear are the two up and down levers either side of the centre of the wheel. No complaints here. They've got a positive registration and feel really robust with a rubber boot near the mounting point to keep things looking neat and tidy. Due to their thin size and distance from the hand grips I find them tricky to locate without looking at them, 
but I can't really punish the wheel for that. The wheel display is a clear upgrade to those you find on the lower price formula wheels and can show you full text options instead of the three digit abbreviations. It's a nice way to elevate the wheel into premium territory, but as far as practical use goes, I never find myself taking any notice of a display during racing, only if I'm using it to configure one of the five force feedback profiles via the menu. In this regard, it is more comfortable changing settings when you have a proper display to look at, but it doesn't make up for those thumb dials. The LED strip on top of the wheel differs from the F1 Esports and Formula Carbon in style alone, but admittedly the trapezoid shaped lights are a real nice style touch and to go to the effort of this is another way that Fanatec have tried to differentiate this as a higher end formula wheel. At this point also let me state that the button caps you see here are from the Fanatec button cap kit and the standard buttons that you get with the Formula V2 are all black and Xbox themed so it's a bit of a swizz that you don't get this extra button cap kit with the wheel to customise it just how you like it. So if you want to reproduce something like what you see on screen, you'll need to chuck that button kit in the basket at the checkout too. And at about 20 quid for some plastic buttons, it can sting a bit if you're already laying down money for a once in a while gift to yourself. The Formula V2 is the only Fanatec wheel I've used, but luckily a friend of mine has the standard F1 eSports wheel, which enables us to discuss and compare what we think of them. He doesn't have the thumb dials and multi-position switches like I do, and he does feel that he could do with the extra switch gear. The question I'm trying to resolve with this overview is whether that extra switch gear is really worth the 120 euro difference between the standard wheel and the Formula V2 depicted in this video. I can sum it up like this. If I had a standard F1 eSports wheel and Fanatec was to offer a kit to upgrade it with the extra Formula V2 switch gear for 120 euros, it wouldn't exactly be described as a bargain. Although I love the Formula V2 in general, if Fanatec brings out a V3, I would hope that they would address the feedback that I recount in this video that's probably shared amongst quite a few V2 owners. The vast majority of the Formula V2 is excellent and it is a beautiful piece of equipment that feels very well engineered and solid, but I believe these attributes extend down to the two cheaper wheels in the range also. So, if you're deciding whether to upgrade your F1 eSports wheel to a Formula V2, or you're just weighing up which wheel to choose with your new Fanatec wheelbase, my advice would be to go with the F1 eSports wheel and put the money that you've saved to better use, unless you really like the amazing aesthetics of a V2, or you absolutely must have the extra dials and switches it brings to your fingertips. If you do, I wouldn't blame you, because that's exactly why I went for the V2. Just don't expect those extra dials to be quite as good as the price difference would suggest. Fanatec has got their packaging and presentation technique down to a T, and the unboxing experience of the Formula V2 is pretty intense. I am an artist. The track is my canvas. And the car is my brush. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, then please subscribe. That will help me a big lot. Thank you very much.